This is AEDT 2150U Digital Technologies and Advanced Teaching Methods. The title for this particular video clip is Constituents of a Constructivist Course Design. How do we design a course according to constructivist principles? How is that different from designing any other course? Jonathan, in 1994, proposed that there are eight characteristics that differentiate constructivist learning environments from other learning environments. In this video clip, we will present and explain his model. The analysis questions for this particular video clip are as follows. What are the characteristics of a constructivist learning environment? In your opinion, what is the most important characteristic? Justify your answer. And in your opinion, what is the, re the least relevant characteristic? And again, justify your answer. Constructivist learning environments provide multiple representations of reality. For example, if you gave a course about how to make bread in a constructivist environment, you would include the possibilities to have a variety of answers depending on your learner's country of origin. In North America, the process of making bread is not the same as in South America, Europe, Africa, the Middle East, and Asia. This, for example, is my husband's bread and is typical bread we bake in Eastern Canada. Multiple representations avoid oversimplification and represent the complexity of the real world. Let's follow our example about making bread. If the learner understands that bread making techniques vary across the world, they must also come to know that in different geographical regions, bread is not made with the same grain. Also, there are differences in food cultures across the world. In Canada, we eat sandwiches with two slices of bread. In, Scan in Scandinavia, one slice suffices. In the Middle East, a sandwich is often a wrap. In some African countries, bread is used to grab the food. Constructivist learning environments emphasize knowledge construction inserted in knowledge reproduction. Knowing the recipe for bread is not sufficient. One must learn how to make the bread, mix the ingredients, knead the dough, and see it rise. Constructivist learning environments emphasize authentic tasks in a meaningful concept context rather than abstract instruction out of context. What would be the experience of making bread without eating it? Constructivist learning environments provide learning environments such as real-world settings or case-based learning instead of predetermined sequence of instruction. To ensure that learners learn to make bread, there is a prepara preparation that is required. This involves buying the ingredients, finding a kitchen environment to bake the bread, cleaning the kitchen, and etc. on top of preparing students to execute the recipe. It would be much less trouble to simply teach the recipe and show a video and buy a loaf of bread, but would students really learn how to make bread? Constructivist learning environments encourage thoughtful reflection on experience. This point speaks for itself. Once students have tried something out, they should be able to reflect on the experience. Student reactions would probably be separated in two. Some would think that making bread is too much trouble. Others might think that it is really amazing to know the whole process of baking bread. The question that remains is, what should the teacher or the course designer do with these reactions? Constructivist learning environments enable context and content-dependent knowledge construction. Now, depending on the context and the content, the knowledge construction will be different. For example, the process of making bread sometimes involves letting the dough rise and sometimes it does not. It depends, again, where you are and what is the food culture attached to bread baking. Constructivist learning environments support collaborative construction of knowledge through social negotiation, not competition, among learners for recognition. Learning how to make bread alone is almost an impossible task. First, the learner needs a good model. Second, the learner can help each other in measuring the ingredients, finding the right texture, etc. Some learners might be more comfortable in doing activities that require manipulating objects, while others might not. This is why collaboration is so important. 
As a final note, remember that in a constructivist approach, learners have a specific set of challenges that they do not have in content-driven approach. For example, learners who have a good memory but weak problem-solving or collaboration skills might feel frustrated about the constructivist teaching approach. They are successful in a traditional teaching context, but will not necessarily be the highest achievers in a constructivist environment because the, because the rules of learning change. The synthesis questions for this video clip are the following. How should we design environments to foster constructivist learning? How should we prepare learners to learn by using a constructivist approach? And finally, how should we prepare teachers to teach by using a constructivist approach?